New, 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 new. Yeah. I stopped thinking about a song for the new product section because you just sing something each time. All right. Ready? New, 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 new. Okay. Okay. Headers. All right. We've got two millimeter pitch headers. These are the male type headers. Uh, you get five in each bag, and then if you just keep going, it just I'm shows just gonna you. going to keep going. Yeah, keep going again. Shows you again, and then keep going. And these are the matching uh, five, uh, sorry, two millimeter um, socket headers. And so um, these go together, and I will show them on the overhead if you do not mind. Okay, do you want me overhead to go to these yet, or is this the next thing? Oh, those are the same thing. You can you can go through those, but okay. yeah, there's just like different angles. We got angles. these amazing photos. I got to show them. Show them. All right. So you're like, hey, but Lady Ada, you've already carried header. Why are you carrying more header? And I will explain. So this is um, standard 0.1 um, inch pitch header. And this is basically what's used in total. It's breadboards and like pretty much like anything that all the breakouts. But once in a while, you'll have stuff that uses point, uh, sorry, two millimeter um, pitch header. So you can see it's just a slightly bit less. But that slightly bit less means it will not work unless you have the right size. And these are like used um, in XBs and other modules. And I've just had enough times where I've had to like connect to something with two millimeter pitch that I was like, oh, you know, we should just carry um, the strips. And I think this is like 36 pin or 40 pin strips. And then these, we couldn't get these in any longer. So these are the socket headers and these are 25 uh, pins or so. And these match um, to themselves. So you know, if I plug it in, I probably won't be able to remove them, but they match. Um, so you can get either one. And um, these are break apart, so if you snap these, they'll just um, break open and you can, I'll just show, just they can, you can snap them into any length. They have little notches. These are not break apart, so they do not break easily. But what you can do is um, take diagonal cutters and just cut them to the length you want and then just um, clean them up a little bit with a sandpaper or a file or something or not clean them up because you don't care. And you're like that. Um, so that's two millimeter pitch header. Very handy for when you have two millimeter pitch parts. Okay. All right, let's keep moving, because we got a lot ahead. Keep moving. All righty, next up. This is the Pi Easy Connect. This is a hat for the Raspberry Pi A+, Pi 2, and Pi um, B+. Um, it kind of looks just like exactly what it looks like, um, and I think the photos are really good, so I can show it on the overhead, but I, I think this, can you uh, click on that photo, because it kind of shows you the best thing. It's, it basically, it connects all the pins to terminal blocks, um, and so you can uh, very easily connect and disconnect uh, wired switches and sensors and stuff. Great if you don't want to use a breadboard and you want to have something that's mechanically solid. Um, you get a couple three volts, you get a couple ground, um, you get five volts, and then you get, of course, one GPIO per pin. Uh, it's really well designed. Um, it comes fully assembled. It has fuses on the power lines. Uh, this is like a great little hat. I, I would not design anything better than this, so I'm just carrying it. Okay. Let's keep moving. All right, um, we have a video. This is the Pi Sense hat, which is also a hat and is also green. Uh, this is from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This is part of their Astro Pi uh, project where they're having school kids um, write code for um, this hat, which has an 8x8 um, RGB grid. It has a humidity sensor. It has a barometric pressure sensor. It has a um, nine DOF accelerometer gyro magnetometer. I think it's a, I don't know. Oh yeah, it's a LSM nine uh, DS one. Um, there's also this LED driver. Um, let's look at the overhead, and I can just sort of show it off. Let's go to the overhead. Yeah. So actually, so it's, it's lit up, so you're not going to be able to see it. But the, the LEDs can like do different designs and stuff. But yeah, you've got accelerometer, you've got humidity sensor, pressure sensor. Um, nine DOF, eight by eight grid. Uh, this is um, part of the LED driver. This is the LED driver, and there's a little joystick as well, and um, also hat identif identification EEPROM. So, um, and this is the little chip that drives the LED matrix with commands. Um, so, yeah, this is a basically, you know, you want to make an all in one output device that has all the sensors. Um, this is kind of a nice little hat. Okay. Fits on right. your Pi. Works Ooh, with the Pi. A plus, B plus, Pi 2, uh, not the Model 1 because of course it has the 2 by uh, mm. 20 connector, but you can stack another hat on top. Okay, and since we're catching it. up from last week, we still have um, some things that we didn't, uh, we put in the store two weeks ago. I know. But we're just getting to now. I know, we're getting to these. This is the yeah. light blue bean. This is a Bluetooth Little Energy 
development platform. It comes with an Atmega 328, that's a little chip in the center, and it also has this BLE module. I don't know what it's based off of. Maybe it's a CC2450 or whatever, or it's the NR51822. Either way, it's wirelessly programmed, and the kind of the idea is you can use your iPad, or you can also use a Mac or Windows 8 forward, um, or Linux to program the Atmega 328 remotely. So it's basically like an Arduino Uno compatible chip, but it's wirelessly programmed with Bluetooth and it runs on a little coin cell. Yeah. And I can show it off. It's very small and cute. Look at how small and cute. Uh, so yeah, it has a little Bluetooth module. This is that chip. And then, yeah, you cannot program it by plugging in any sort of USB. You have to program it wirelessly. Which, like, I'm not super into, but I figured there's people who might be into it, and so I, yeah. I will carry it for um, those people. I'm not going to discriminate against people who want to wirelessly <laughs> upload code to uh, at Mega 32, uh, 328. We have a big tent here. Big tent. Uh, there's some breakouts for power, and then there's breakouts for, like, you know, analog zero, analog one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So there's a bunch of pins, some grounds, and then a little prototyping area. So it's, it's probably good for making very small, lightweight little Bluetooth things. What's nice about it is it's it's cute and small and portable. So um, if you want something teeny, um, this is very teeny. OK. All right, let's keep moving. Um, so big news. We are now a media distribution company. But we only distribute um, one uh, form of media right now that, Other you than can, books. That, that you can know that you can play on a TV, and that's um, yeah, we now have Blu-rays. But we only carry one Blu-ray. We only have one Blu-ray, but it's, a, the it's a 20th. Anniversary edition. Twentieth anniversary edition. Um, these were given away at um, DNA Lounge in San Francisco. Um, our friend Jamie uh, JWZ had a hackers party with the twentieth edition. We also you saw you can rollerblade and play white yeah, bat Excel. We also saw our friend Emmanuel who has a, um, a, a, a commentary piece on it. So this is this is I think one of I, maybe I, some people say the best whatever. This war games hackers. It's a great movie. Sneakers. It's a great movie, and you have to watch the director's cut and like the all the commentary that goes along with it. The Matrix. Yeah. These are like classic hacker movies. Yeah. So great movie. Angelina Jolie. It, great lips. Yeah. Uh, showing off her cool skills. It's a it's a great movie. If you have a Blu-ray player, um, it's the only thing that well we I have a Blu-ray player and it plays Star Trek: Next Generation that came out on Blu-ray and this and. Uh, it's kind of cool, and it's beautiful. I mean, it does. They remastered it. a lot, a lot of cool things with it. Anyways, so now we're media distribution. Come company. on! All right, get a Blu-ray player. Play let's, hackers. Let's keep going. Adafruit.com slash hackers is the thing now. Okay. Okay. So we have a proximity sensor. This Speaking. is a updated product. It's kind of new. It's kind of updated. This is the VCNL 4010 proximity sensor. We have previously carried the VCNL 4000. That chip got discontinued. This chip is almost identical, except it's, um, well, it has 10 in the name, sort of just 4000. It has an interrupt pin output. And, and the, the interrupt, the code is a little bit different. So we have a new library for it. But it's basically a proximity sensor. Um, it's good to up to 200 millimeters or so. but. In most uses, it's about 100 millimeter. It basically has an IR LED inside of that package, an IR detector, so it can detect how far away your hand is. So, you know, it works about like this far. It, it's basically meant for detecting if your hand is up against something or it's held up to your ear, like for a phone. Like if you're, you know, how it knows that you're, um, have, you have the phone up to your ear. Like this, is, this, this is the sensor that um, is used. It's a little, okay. little light sensor that bounces light off and measures it. Um, it's a little bit like the sharp distance sensors, but yeah, it's, it's not very high power. It's very small. Okay, we're going to keep moving along. We got a lot more stuff. Yes. A book. Updated version of programming the Raspberry Pi. This is a second edition from Simon Monk. Um, update for the Raspberry Pi 2. Some tweaks, yeah. updates. More, 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 Looks more. Looks good. Simon Monk is a prolific machine. Yeah. Okay. Um, guess what? There's more. There's more. LEDs. Some people ask, why don't you have yellow LEDs? I'm like, yeah, I guess I should have yellow LEDs. I'm not a huge fan of yellow LEDs, but we are carrying them now. They're clear before you put power through them. That's right. Um, <laughs> I show them in the overhead. They're, they're it's basically just ultra bright um, yellow LEDs. All right. Wait, hold on. But these aren't working. LED tester. Oh my god, so bright. Um, they're yellow, like the sun. Uh, I don't know. You want yellow LEDs? They're clear. Um, very unidirectional, like very like 10 degree or 15 degree angle, so you can see like not so bright, and then insanely bright. Um, they look clear. They're yellow, yellowed up. If you asked for the Mr. Guy, now it's time to buy them. Okay, let's keep yeah, going. Yeah, Mr. Guy, you asked for these. Yeah. We got, we okay. Have them now. Um, 
I'm going in order that we release the product. So this was the big announcement last week. Windows IoT, Adafruit, Microsoft, doing stuff on Pis. We have two versions, one with a Raspberry Pi 2 and one without. So here's the deal. I actually want to give Microsoft credit because they're actually trying. Like, they're trying to be cool. Like, they're releasing something for the Raspberry Pi. You know, the, the, op the operating system is free. You can get We're Windows the weirdest stuff for free. people they could find to work with. And I was actually like, you know what? You guys are trying. They're trying to, like, do open source hardware, open source software. It's Microsoft. Like, there's a limit, but, you know, you're not gonna, they're not going to, like, release the source code to Windows. But this is about as close as they can get. So they're, they're releasing more cool. stuff. They release example code in. So I wanted to reward them for, like, at least going out there and doing something interesting yeah. for the maker community. There's a lot of people who know .NET, C Sharp. You know, they want to write this code, and they want to run it on Raspberry Pi. I think that's interesting. Um, so we basically made a pack for them. It's, it's deceptively Ooh. like the starter kit. It's a vault like the starter kit we have, but it comes with an SD card that is uh, um, 8 gig class D. Uh, sorry, 8 gig class 10 instead of class four, so it's a lot faster, it boots faster, they say it's better. It comes with the official Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi dongle, which is supported by Windows 10, yeah. Ethernet cable, and then um, you know some assembled sensors. You get a barometric pressure sensor assembled and a color sensor assembled. So basically a solder-free way to get going with the starter kit. Um, yeah. They're sold out, but we promise we are going to make more as soon as humanly possible. So um, please sign up, and it's working out. we will be making more. They were very popular. And congratulations, Microsoft, on a fantastic launch and um, for jumping into this great um, Windows IoT world, IoT world, and Raspberry Pi world. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. I'm trying to convince them to write a demo for Adafruit.io. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm going to email um, a couple of the devs that I met at Maker Fair. They were really into it. They're doing a lot of home automation stuff, which is really neat. Um, we saw a lot of cool demos. You know what? I have to say, because um, I've been doing Maker Fair for 10 years, Microsoft had one of the best they did. Um, pavilions. They there. updated their booth. It they was very good. They did a really good, good job. Got to give cred where cred's due. Okay, next up, Pimerni. Um, this is a beautiful uh, in, uh, holder case stand for um, the new um, Raspberry Pi uh, display. This is really beautiful. It's a very simple laser cut case, but it's very effective. It comes with a little bumper so it doesn't um, slip on your desk. Nice, I'll nice. show it uh, on the overhead if yeah. you would like. Um, it is. Ex you want to do the yeah, overhead? Yeah, the overhead. I'll zoom out. It's kind of like the overhead, but. Whoa. It's over your head. Nope. I you lost the overhead? lost it. No. It's okay. It's okay. I'll just, I'll just hold it up. Well, that's weird. It's completely free. No, it's like it's mid scan line. Weird. Totally free. Do you want me to unplug it? Or plug it? No. Fuck it. That would, be the, that would be a really bad idea. All right. Okay. Well, we're back. Hold it up. Um, it's a so you have the um, capacitive touch display and then. Um, plastic so. pieces that hold the Raspberry Pi nicely on here. See if it goes back. See if it goes back. No. It's gone forever. Okay. All right. Now it's gone. Um, the Raspberry Pi goes on the back. Um, all the cables are very nice, and then it has these little legs, so it um, sits at a, a nice, convenient angle. And uh, it's a really great little case. We went with black, which I think matches the display because it has the, the black overlay. So. Um, yeah, this is a okay. lovely accessory. Pimony did an excellent job. They did. Okay, next up, before the, the final thing that we're going to show tonight, a cable. This isn't the final thing. This is the thing before thing the final before thing. thing. So this cable is just a really handy cable. And what's funny is I tried to carry this um, like a couple years ago, and I didn't do a very good job, and I actually never put it in the store because I didn't get a good cable. But I have a good cable now. This is a USB to DC cable. It's one meter long. Oh, this and is handy. And I got it with 22 wire gauge wire, so it's a nice thick wire. Um, the ones I had before were like, I, I kind of ended up not specifying, so I ended up getting like 28 gauge wire, which is lame. 22 gauge wire, so you can definitely pull an amp, two amps through this, not a problem. This allows you to connect something that would normally take 5 volt DC through um, a DC barrel jack and connect to something that outputs USB. So it's really good for these like USB power packs, for example, or um, your computer, something that normally would you could plug into um, a wall adapter, you can now plug into a computer for power. Um, power boosts you can use. You can use these with our little OLED charger doctors also if you want to like see how much current is being drawn. These are just really handy cables. And I finally have really good quality ones, so I'm happy to put them in the store. Okay. And then um, last but not least, this just went in the store today. 
Um, we finally have it. These are the Flash Forge 3D printers. Yeah. They're that big. No, they're not that big. They're, um, this is uh, the Flash Forge printer, and this is one of the most loved 3D printers. Yeah. It's, it's actually, you know, if you're looking at it, you're like, that kind of looks a little bit like, a, you know, a MakerBot um, Gen 4, like Rep2 Gen If you 4. really like the previous gen of MakerBot if that, you liked that, it. E that everyone was really into, you'll like this. You'll like this, because um, that design was open source, and while this is not a clone, it is a derivative, they've changed quite a few things, um, but it does have the same shape and look. Um, it has excellent quality, the price is really great, um, it works really well. Um, we have them in the store. If you're in the U.S., Continental yeah. U.S., you'll get free shipping. Yeah, let me uh, give you a rundown real quick. So it's uh, $12.99. Um, which it, is really great. Yeah, so we do have the, the 10% It's like half the price of, of other 3D Yeah, printers. we have the 10% off code, um, and then you get free UPS ground. So we actually, you're pretty much getting it what we're getting it at, which is fine. Like, we're in this to, to help the world. This one, if we Pick break up some even, kits, okay. it's okay. Please buy some other things. Um, but it's great with the 1.75 millimeter ABS and PLA. Yep, it has a heated bed. You can see yeah. the enclosure, so it's heated. Um, you get a lot. Yeah, um, warp resistance aluminum uh, build platform, so you don't have the wobbly. It has like a touch wobbly. calibration. Um, so no and Pedro said they we run 3D Thursday. They love this 3D printer. They said this is yeah. like their new favorite. So um, as people notice, we stock a menagerie of 3D printers and it's the ones that are we think are the best. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the ones that we really like and um, we'll see how it goes. Um, but this is, um, I, I think that it's that mid-range one. So it's not $2,500 and it's not two or $300. It's right in the middle. It's like 1300 And um, for all the stuff that we do here, um, this is our pick, so. Okay. Anyways. So you have a couple of small ones, yeah. larger ones. Okay. Biggie ones, this is so a nice mid-range. Yeah, so that was new product data. Yay, okay. we did it.